2D animation is a very versatile art form. And I think that you'll all agree that Cartoon Animator is a brilliant tool to bring your characters to life. One style that I've always personally loved is when you mix 2D animation and live action. Films that have live action and animation are sometimes called hybrid, and it's a technique that has been used for over 100 years. The early suck of fine was a film from 1919 called Out of the Inkwell, followed by the Alice comedy series made by Disney. This was something that Disney loved doing, as this technique was used in films such as Song of the South and Mary Poppins. However, these films had live action characters inside a cartoon world. I think that the most famous film to have 2D characters in a live action world is most likely Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And with Cartoon Animator, you can create similar effects. In this video, I'll show you how you can export a quick time with a transparent background, how you can export an After Effects project with a transparent background, creating a scene inside After Effects, creating a scene inside Final Cut Pro, how you create a scene inside Hit Film Express, and a few final thoughts. So the first thing we're going to cover is how you export a transparent QuickTime from Cartoon Animator. So you've got your animated sequence, and the next thing you want to do is click on the Render button, choose Video, MOV, and make sure you select Apple ProRes 4444. You can then choose your ratio, so I'm going to choose 4K, click Export, give your file a name, and then let your file render out. The other way you can render out a transparent quick time is via the After Effects plugin. So go up to Render, click on Export to After Effects, and here you can see you can now choose between a PNG sequence or a MOV file. So I've selected a MOV file. You can change the resolution if you want to. Click Export, give it a name, and let the files render out. Once the files are rendered out, go to After Effects, and then you want to choose Cartoon Animator AE Script, Click Import Project, find the JSON file, and let the files load up inside After Effects. And here you can see your animation is being brought in as a QuickTime. You can also turn the background on and off, and you can see that it's now transparent. The next thing you want to do is create a composition inside After Effects. So load up After Effects and go to File, Import, File, and then select all the files you want to import. And on the left hand side in the Assets window, you'll see all the files. You'll see your Cartoon Animator character, and also all the assets that will build up the scene. So you select your character and drag it into the timeline. And then what you want to do is bring in all the assets that are going to make up that scene. So we'll start with the background, and then the background lights, and for this, we'll change the mode to overlay just to give it a bit of an extra glow. And we'll drag Ray of Light in as well. And we'll also change the mode to overlay. And then we'll drag all the other assets in front of the horse. So we've got the falling leaves, we've got some particles, we've got the bird, we've got the shrub, some butterflies, and also another Ray of Light. And we'll change the mode of that to overlay as well. Okay, so we'll just scrub through that, and as you can see, there's a nice little sequence there. But the next thing we're going to do is add a bit of a glow to the horse. So we'll set the horse, go to Effects, and there's a great plugin called Plugins and Everything, Shadow Studio 2, and I highly recommend it. So you select that, and the shadow type, we'll change from Normal to Inner, and then we'll tweak a few settings. So we'll change the distance to around about 40, and then we'll change the colour from black to like a yellow to be a bit of a glow from the sun. And we we'll change the blend mode to screen and we'll bring the opacity down to around about 20. So if we turn the effect on and off again, you can see that it's added like a nice little glow to the horse. So I really highly, highly recommend that plugin. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is put it into a bit more of a 3D space. So to do that, we'll select the bottom three layers and then we'll click on the little box, which is a 3D box. It turns your 
projects into a 3D space. So then we'll choose two views so we can see the camera and also our main window. And then with those three bottom layers selected, we'll change the Z axis and move that back. But then what we want to do is make, you know, make the size a bit bigger so it fills the screen. So we'll change the scale up so it fills the screen like that. And then we'll close it down and we'll change all the layers to red just so we can tell that they are the background layers. So then we'll do the same to everything that's in front of the horse. So we'll select all the layers, turn them into 3D and with the Z axis we'll bring it forward. And we also want to change the size, so we'll change the scale down so it fits back inside the frame, like that. And then we'll change the layers to yellow, just so we can tell that that's everything in front of the horse. Okay, now we need to turn the 3D layer on for the horse itself, and that will give us material options. So we turn that on, and scrub it through, and it's still the same sequence that we had before. So now we want to go to Layer, New, Solid, and we'll call this Floor. Go to OK. And we need to turn that 3D as well. And then toggle down. And then we want to change the X axis so it's like it's a floor. So we'll bring that down underneath where the horse is. And we'll go to Layer, New, Camera, and we'll leave that to the default settings and move that to the top. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is go to Layer, New, Light. So we're going to select Point Light and we're going to make sure it says Cast Shadows and go to OK. Okay, now we'll go to the horse, and move that above the floor and toggle down, and because we've made it 3D, we've now got these material options. So toggle down, and where it says car shadows off, we want to click on it, so it goes on. And now you'll see that there's a shadow being cast in the background. But it's also casting on the actual background itself. So we want to toggle down to the background, turn accept lights off. So now we've only got the shadow from the horse itself. So here I've just sped it up a little bit, but you can change the positioning of the lights. So I've changed it now so it's looking like it's actually underneath the horse. Change the mode to soft light, just so it gets rid of the actual grey of the floor. But now you can see there's a bit of a harsh line here. So to get rid of that, or to try and get rid of that, I'm just going to go to Layer, New Mask. And then I'll select the mask and bring it down a bit. So bring it down. And this is purely just so we can put a feather on it to help blend it into the background. So toggle down and bring up the mask feather to around about 100. And as you can see, it's made it a bit softer, so it doesn't look as harsh now. Okay, but everything's looking a bit dark. We've got the shadow, but it's looking a bit dark. So now we want to go to Layer, New, Lights. And here we'll choose a spotlight, and we want to turn car shadows off. So go OK. And here we can actually lighten up the scene by putting a few more lights on the horse. It's making the shadow not look not quite as dark, but it's still affecting the scene. But we've also got the shadow there as well. So now we want to select all the positions for the camera, move those over to about four seconds, go back to the beginning of the timeline for the, from the camera, and then move the Z axis forward. So we're panning into the shot. So we're starting the camera position close up. And then the camera is slowly panning back over those four seconds and it's slowly revealing the bird and the shrubs. I'm just going to change the lighting a little bit more to make it a little bit more atmospheric and just moving the lights around a little bit really. And then once you're happy with that, go to add to render queue, go to settings, I always make mine a ProRes QuickTime, go to OK, give it a name and render it out. The next thing we're going to do is very simply layer up a scene inside Final Cut. So I've brought all the assets into Final Cut and we're going to start off with the backgrounds. And that's our horse. So then we put in the background lights and like we did with After Effects, we'll change the blend mode to overlay. Just so it gives it a, that little bit of a glow. And we'll drag in Ray of Light as well and we'll do the same to that. We'll change that to overlay. 
Okay, and then we'll drag in the horse and that's got its transparency so that blends into the scene well. And then we'll drag all the other layers that go in front of the horse in such as the falling leaves, the birds, the bush and some butterflies and finally end with a ray of light. And again, we'll change the blend mode for that to overlay. And I'm just adding a bit of a blur to the bird just so it blends into the scene a little bit more. So we'll play that through. And once you're happy with that, we'll go to File, Share, Master File, and click Next, give it a name, and let the file render out. And finally, I'm going to show you how you can layer up a scene inside HitFilm Express. Now, I've never really used HitFilm Express before, but it's free um, and I'm sure it's going to be very useful to most users. So I'm bringing in all the layers as a image sequence because I couldn't work out how to do the opacity actually inside inside HitFilm. But actually the quick times with transparency that you export from Cartoon Animator do come through with transparency, so that's great. So I'm just bringing in all these sequences that make up my sequence like that and the horse is in and he's got his transparency so then like I did in Final Cut I'm just going to drag all the layers inside the composition starting off with the background followed by the background lights as I say I'm pretty new to hit film so this is very 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 basic tutorial on it here so we're bringing in all the files inside the composition here, layering them up. And we're going to put the horse in like that. And you can see that he's blending into the background because he's got his transparency. And a bit in a bit of grass, the falling leaves, the birds, the shrub, some butterflies and another ray of light. I'm just going to play that through and it's a our little sequence inside hit film. I'm sure you can add a load of extra special effects to this. But we're going to go to export to file, give it a name and let it render out. What I love about Real Legion is that they are always updating the software constantly making it better for users to create fantastic animation sequences. Exporting as a transparent QuickTime via Windows or Mac is a great addition, especially now that you're also able to export to After Effects as a QuickTime as well as a PNG sequence. It really makes the pipeline even better and helps users to quickly create broadcast animations.